I may or may not have bullied the Falcons into dragging Eddie Goldman out of retirement for a third time now, but the Falcons are bringing back a player that has been with the team for two years despite never actually playing for the team, and Eddie Goldman, for I believe a third time, is out of retirement and has signed with the Falcons. Ian Rappaport tweeted it out shortly after we put out a video already on the channel, but if I've been banging the drum to add someone on the defensive line and the Falcons answer my call, yeah, we're going to make another video about the signing. Now, if you didn't watch our video that came out like two and a half hours ago or so, this video does not cuck that video. Uh, it's all about the Falcons being linked to the Chiefs defensive end, Mike Dana. But in that video, I may or may not have, um, well, let's just roll the tape. For me, it's really simple. Insert any edge rusher you want, and my answer is yes. I don't care who it is. I don't care how old they are, how big, how small, how fat, how tiny they are. I don't want to take complete credit for that, but I think partially we got some butts moving in Flowery Branch to get someone on the defensive line. Now, we're going to talk about Eddie Goldman in more detail and put the jokes aside here because he's not an edge rusher. He's a nose tackle. He's an interior defensive lineman. That's primary job is to stop the run. But let's at least kind of open up the history book and remind everyone, if you're curious, like, how do I know that name? It's because it's like the third time this has happened. So Eddie Goldman back in 2022, two years ago, let's just say like right around now. Okay, I don't think it was on this day though. He signs with the Falcons. He does not play for the team in 2022. He retires a few weeks after signing with the team. Now we go back one year ago and he's already retired. He comes out of retirement to play for the Falcons in 2023. He decides after a few weeks like he did the year prior, no, I don't want to do this. And he re-retires. And now, if you can believe it, a third straight year of Eddie Goldman coming out of retirement to play for the Falcons, the team he has been with for two years and has never played a snap for, has returned. So what's your one-word reaction to the signing on retirement of Eddie Goldman, former second-round pick by the Chicago Bears in 2015? What is it? For me, I'll say retirement, because I think he's going to re-retire. I have all the reasons in the world to believe Eddie Goldman is going to go through OTA, he's going to go through minicamp, going to go through training camp, and if he's not very high up on the depth chart, if he's not going to play a ton of snaps, and he does not want to go through all this grind, all this work to play at the bottom of the totem pole, which I guess was the case the last two years, he'll go right back to what he's done the last two years, which is just re-retire. Now, when you look at the Atlanta defensive line, Eddie Goldman stepping onto this team does not make him an immediate starter. I think he is pushing for a job to help replace Grady Jarrett if Jarrett misses the beginning of the season since he is coming off a torn ACL. If Grady Jarrett is ready to roll by week one, which I think there are some positive beliefs that could happen in Flowery Branch, then Eddie Goldman is simply battling to be a part of the defensive line rotation. But I'm looking at Eddie Goldman's snaps. At his peak in 2017 with the Bears, he played 61% of the snaps. His last season in Chicago in 2021, he was down to 39%. So about an 11%, oh, 20, whatever the math is, a decent drop-off in snap percentage right there. There were questions when he was in Chicago at the end if he really wanted to continue playing football. He opted out of 2020. And then in 2021, didn't really have a big role on that Bears defense. He went from being an everyday starter for that team to not starting four games for the Bears. And then he retires, and everyone in Chicago is like, yeah, we kind of saw this coming. But Eddie Goldman in his career, Florida State standout, 39th overall pick by the Bears, uh, played for Chicago for a good stretch. He has not played since 2021, so 2022, 2023, two seasons of sitting on his couch watching Red Zone, which that's the life right there. I don't uh, shame him for that. Had a good run with the Bears. Drafted in 2014. Was that the right? Yeah, I guess so. Um, no, drafted in 2015. Drafted in 2015 by the Bears. So excuse the 2014 typo. But hey, anytime a, a signing happens, we're going to make sure you guys are covered here. So that is why you are subscribed to the channel. 
because if we are going to be banging the drum for Atlanta to sign an edge rusher and they sign a defensive lineman, you better believe we're going to get a video out to you as soon as possible. Now, I do not want the Falcons to feel like their work is done at defensive line. No, there are still some very good edge rusher targets out there. Jared Verse, if I just kind of sprint through all these guys, I think is maybe the most well-rounded of the bunch when it comes to run-stopping in addition to pass rushing. Leatu Latu, I don't know why he's not a little bit higher on everyone's draft boards, and I'm kind of warming up to him a little bit, but I just can't look past Dallas Turner being an incredible athlete and production at Alabama. I used to be a little bit more sour on him, but the more I watch, the more I like. Pass on Chop Robinson. Darius Robinson in round two at the earliest. But on the interior, I think Jerzon Johnny Newton is an excellent pick. We have not seen a defensive tackle with as high of an interior pass rushing upside in a while. I don't think he's the next like Sue, Donald, or Wilkins when it comes to generating sacks at the defensive tackle spot. But I don't think he's, uh, I should say very far off, but I, I think he's somewhere in between. Uh, Byron Murphy and Tavondre Sweat. Murphy's a much more of a pass rushing DT. Sweat is more of a nose tackle run stopping DT. But Eddie Goldman on this team, if he does play on this team, which I don't think we should jump to conclusions about since we've been down this road before, I think would fill a rotational defensive line spot. And if he can play close to what he once was doing with the Chicago Bears, then it's a really good signing. Like It was a good signing for the Falcons back in 2022. He unfortunately just hasn't played a snap for them because I'm not really sure what's going on with him on a personal level of why he decides to retire and unretire three times now. I don't think it's injury related. Like he wasn't all that banged up in 2021. I think he ended the year with the Bears injured. Uh, and maybe I just can't remember what it is right now. But he opted out in 2020. So that kind of gave his whole body a year to recover from, you know, the grind of playing in the National Football League. But I don't think it was an injury led retirement. I just think there was a disconnect between him and wanting to play football. But I guess he's decided he does mix, does miss, you know, the smell of uh, fresh cut grass and whistles being blown. And Ass is being slapped in the locker room. So, Eddie Goldman, you're back for now. Not that confident it'll be very long, but for the time being, we'll enjoy the ride. Uh, what's your confidence level in this Falcons defensive line? We will wrap up the show with this question here. Scale it 1 to 10 for me. I would put it at a, if Grady Jarrett's healthy, I'd put it at like a, a 6.4. I think David Onyemata and Grady Jarrett are really good defensive tackles. Zach Harrison's a bit of a question mark, but he ended the year on a high note last year, so I'll look at it for a bit more half glass full. You add, if you get what you had from Eddie Goldman in 2018, that was his best year with the Bears. Um, he had 40 tackles for Chicago, three sacks, five tackles for loss. Um, to get that, you know, to get 80% of that production out of him as a rotational piece, him and Contavious Street off the bench. I mean, that's going to provide some really nice depth for the Atlanta defensive line. And you need to have some depth at the defensive line because it's a committee approach, right? Sure, you have your Aaron Donalds of the world that just never come off the field, but for most other teams, they're going to get 65, maybe 70% snap percentage out of their top defensive tackle. That other 30 to 35%, you got to have a good plan for it. And if Eddie Goldman can fill that role, I'm on board. I don't think it's going to be much bigger than that role, though. 